Seventh grade open up resources, illustrative math. Unit seven, lesson one, relationships of angles. Key terms, adjacent angles. Adjacent angles share a side and a vertex. In this diagram, angle ABC is adjacent to angle BDC. The side that these two adjacent angles share is line segment BC and the vertex that they both share is located at point B. Straight angle. A straight angle is an angle that forms a straight line. It measures 180 degrees. Right angle. A right angle is half of a straight angle. It measures 90 degrees. Problem number one. Here are questions about two types of angles. Draw a right angle. How do you know it's a right angle? I know it's a right angle because a square fits perfectly inside it. What is its measure in degrees? A right angle's measure is 90 degrees. Draw a straight angle. How do you know it's a straight angle? I know it's a straight angle because I drew a straight line with an angle of 180 degrees. What is its measure in degrees? Let's take a look at why a straight line is actually 180 degrees. Let's start with a new angle that's represented with a pink color. Let's start at zero and open this angle up until it reaches 180 degrees and you'll see that it makes a straight line. And there it is, a straight line that spans 180 degrees. Problem number two. An equilateral triangle's angles each have a measure of 60 degrees. A. Can you put copies of an equilateral triangle together to form a straight angle? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, remember, a straight angle measures 180 degrees. I know that 180 degrees divided by 3 equals 60 degrees. This illustration shows that we could use three angles that each measure 60 degrees to form a straight angle, measuring 180 degrees in total. The answer is yes. Three equilateral triangles put together can form a straight angle. B. Can you put copies of an equilateral triangle together to form a right angle? Explain or show your reasoning. Remember, a right angle measures 90 degrees. And we just figured out that an equilateral triangle measures 60 degrees. Let's put one equilateral triangle inside here and see how much space it takes. Just one equilateral triangle takes up 60 degrees out of the right angle's 90 degrees. Adding another copy of the equilateral triangle would bring the total measure to 120 degrees, and that would be too much. So the answer to the question would be no, because one equilateral triangle is not enough, and two equilateral triangles is too much. Problem number three. Here is a square and some regular octagons. In this pattern, all of the angles inside the octagons have the same measure. The shape in the center is a square. Find the measure of one of the angles inside one of the octagons. Here's the pattern including four octagons, and the shape in the center is a square. Squares are made up of four right angles. I've highlighted one of the right angles in blue. We know that the measure of a right angle is 90 degrees. And we know that the measure of a straight angle is 180 degrees. This yellow line represents a straight angle of 180 degrees. Angle ABC equals 180 degrees minus 45 degrees because the yellow line cuts right through the square, cutting 90 degrees in half, and half of 90 is 45. 180 degrees minus 45 degrees is 135 degrees. Each angle inside an octagon measures 135 degrees. Problem number four from seventh grade unit six lesson 17. The height of the water in a tank decreases by three and five tenths centimeters each day. 
When the tank is full, the water is 10 meters deep. The water tank needs to be refilled when the water height drops below 4 meters. A. Write a question that could be answered by solving the equation 10 minus 35 thousandths times D equals 4. The 10 in the equation represents 10 meters deep. The negative represents a decrease, but 35 thousandths is 100 times smaller than 3 and 5 tenths. And the 4 represents the statement, the water tank needs to be refilled when the water height drops below 4 meters. One basic question that we could write would be, how many days can go by until the water tank needs refilling? B. Is 100 a solution of 10 minus 35 thousandths times D is greater than 4? Write a question that solving this problem could answer. Well, to see if 100 is a solution, let's test it out with D equaling 100. We can rewrite the inequality as 10 minus 35 thousandths times 100 is greater than 4. If it is actually greater than 4, then it would be a solution. 10 minus 3 and 5 tenths is greater than 4. Well, let's see if that's true. 10 minus 3 and 5 tenths is 6 and 5 tenths. And that's true. 6 and 5 tenths is greater than 4. A question that could be answered by solving this inequality would be, after 100 days, would there still be enough water left in the tank that it would not need refilling? Yes, there is still enough water in the tank after 100 days. So at this rate of decrease, after 100 days, the tank would not have to be refilled yet. Problem number 5, from grade 7, unit 6, lesson 18. Use the distributive property to write an expression that is equivalent to each given expression. A. We can do this by multiplying the term on the outside of the parentheses by both the terms on the inside of the parentheses. Negative 3 times 2x. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times a negative 4, or negative 3 times minus 4. Well, that's a negative times a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. Another way to look at that is, negative times a negative means the opposite of a negative, and the opposite of a negative is a positive. 3 times 4 is 12. So after using the distributive property, we can rewrite this expression as negative 6x plus 12. B. 1 tenth times negative 90 plus 50a. Again, when we're using the distributive property, we're going to multiply the outside term by both the terms on the inside of the parentheses. 1 tenth times negative 90 so that's going to be 10 times smaller than negative 90. That's negative 9. And 1 tenth times the second term. And the second term is 50a. So 1 tenth times 50a. That's going to be 10 times smaller than 50a. 10 times smaller than 50a is 5a. We need to add these two terms, but they're not like terms. So we keep it as negative 9 plus 5a. C. Negative 7 times negative x minus 9. This one can be a little tricky because we're multiplying a negative times a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive, or the opposite of a negative is a positive. 7 times x is 7x. Again, we have a negative times a negative, or the opposite of a negative is a positive. 7 times 9 is 63, and again, we're down to two terms, but these two terms are not like terms, so we'll keep them separate, 7x plus 63. You can always tell by looking how many terms you're going to have in your final expression, just by looking at the terms here. We have one term with a y, we have another term with an x, and we have a term with no variable at all. So we're going to have three terms in our final expression. The outside term, 4 fifths, times the first term, 10y. 4 fifths times 10y. I'll multiply these two terms in a minute. 
4 fifths times a negative x. 4 fifths times a negative x is negative 4 fifths x. They did this before the other term as well, but they put a plus sign ahead of a negative sign, and that really means plus a negative. An easier way to think about it is to say and instead of plus, so you can say and a negative. 4 fifths times 15. 4 fifths times 10y, or 4 fifths of 10y is 8y. 4 fifths times 15, or 4 fifths of 15, is 12. Now we're left with the three terms, 8y, a negative 4 fifths x, and minus 12. So after using the distributive property, the expression reads 8y minus 4 fifths x minus 12. Problem number six from grade seven, unit two, lesson three. Lynn's puppy is gaining weight at a rate of 0 0.125 pounds per day. Describe the weight gain in days per pound. I've decided to illustrate this in a chart. On the right hand side, I have the days numbered one through eight. On the left hand side, I have the amount of pounds increasing by 0 0.125 pounds per day. On the fourth day, we have a half a pound. On the eighth day, we have one full pound. Every eight days, the puppy gains one pound. And that's because 0 0.125 pounds is actually an eighth of a pound. So after eight days, the puppy would have gained eight eighths of a pound, or one full pound.